the function of carbohydrate? To some of you, it is for eating. But here in bio world, I will explain to you the biological importance of carbohydrates. The syllabus requires you to be able to relate the structure of disaccharides and polysaccharides to their functions in living organisms. But let me start by introducing the function of monosaccharides. The first function of a monosaccharide is as a source of energy. Oxidation of one molecule of glucose can generate 38 molecules of ATP. The second function of a monosaccharide is to carry out condensation to form disaccharides or even to carry out polymerization to produce polysaccharides. Therefore, the second function of a monosaccharide is to form macromolecules. The third function of monosaccharides are as intermediates of biochemical pathways. This can include monosaccharides from the class of pentose and triose. Organelles like chloroplast and mitochondrion use these sugars in the biochemical pathways of photosynthesis as well as respiration. The fourth function is as raw material for other organic materials. For example, nucleic acid. A nucleotide uses a pentose sugar as the base of its structure. Enzymes. Besides having active site for substrates, enzymes also have a special site for coenzymes, where the coenzyme is synthesized from a sugar molecule. Even ATP itself, adenosine triphosphate, the adenosine part is actually a pentose sugar too. So now that you know the function of monosaccharides, Let's move on to the function of disaccharides. Disaccharides have two major functions. The first function is similar to monosaccharides in that it is a rich source of energy. However, it is not able to generate energy as quickly as monosaccharides because disaccharides have to be broken down by enzymes into monosaccharides. But when the carbon-carbon bonds break, a lot of energy is generated. The second function of disaccharides is specific to plants. When plants carry out photosynthesis, they produce glucose. But the glucose will condense into sucrose before being transported to parts of plants that need nutrients. The reason why the plant does not transport glucose directly is because glucose will be used up by the plant cells. Sucrose, however, is not readily used because sucrose will have to be broken down first. So that is why it is more efficient to transport in the form of sucrose. Of course, plants will not transport in the form of starch because starch is not soluble. Let's move on next to the roles of polysaccharides. The polysaccharides, glycogen, starch and cellulose can be found in animal cells and plant cells. Glycogen can be found in tiny granules in the cytoplasm of animal cells whereas starch can be found in the chloroplast or even in tiny vacuoles in the cytoplasm. Cellulose is found in the cell wall of plant cells. Both glycogen and starch function as storage material in animal and plant cells, whereas cellulose serves as a building material to construct the wall of the plant cell. However, all three, glycogen, starch and cellulose, 
can be a very rich source of energy. Let's look at each one individually. All three polysaccharides can be a source of energy. However, they are not a direct source of energy because they have to be broken down into a monosaccharide. Starch, for example, will be broken down by the enzyme amylase. Amylase can hydrolyze the alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond as well as the alpha-1,6 glycosidic bond. Glycogen that is found in animal cells use a different pathway that is stimulated by the hormone glucagon. Glucagon will activate a series of enzymes that will help break down glycogen into glucose. The enzyme that will break down cellulose, that is the enzyme cellulase, can only be synthesized by bacteria. Only cellulase can break down beta-1,4 glycosidic bonds. So you find the bacteria that synthesize cellulase are in the digestive system of ruminants. The cow itself, for example, cannot synthesize cellulase. It is the bacteria inside the cow that will synthesize cellulase and this enzyme will break down cellulose to produce many glucose molecules. So once starch is broken down, glycogen is broken down or cellulose is broken down, the many molecules of glucose when oxidized by cellular respiration will generate a large amount of energy. The second role of polysaccharides as storage material is limited to starch and glycogen. Starch is the storage material in plants, whereas glycogen is the storage material in animals. Based on their structures, we can see that both molecules are compact. Starch has amylose that has the helical shape, whereas amylopectin and glycogen have the branch shape. We find that the helical shape and the branch shape enables the cell to store many glucose molecules in a very small space. So, storage of these molecules requires less space in the cell. Besides that, we find these molecules are insoluble in water because the hydroxyl groups in the glucose molecules are involved in hydrogen bonding. So, without free hydroxyl groups, we find that the molecules will not mix in water. So no matter how much starch or how much glycogen is stored in the cell, since they don't dissolve, they will not affect the osmotic potential of the cell, meaning that the cell will not become hypertonic. Another advantage of the molecules being insoluble in water is that they will not be able to diffuse out down concentration gradient. So because of that, the molecules will not reduce in concentration. Cellulose is suitable as a building material for the synthesis of the plant cell wall because firstly it is strong. The reason it is strong is its structure. Cellulose is long and unbranched, preventing it from being broken easily. Added to that, each of the cellulose chains hydrogen bond with the next parallel cellulose chain by forming crosslinks. These crosslinks will hold the cellulose chains together so they can accumulate and form microfibrils. These microfibrils will then bind together to form macrofibrils. And on top of that, 
these macrofibrils will overlap one on top the other, making them a completely strong molecule, able to withstand the high hydrostatic pressure experienced by plant cells. This is the reason why plant cells do not burst under the pressure of osmosis. The second reason for why cellulose is suitable as a building material is that it is a stable molecule. You see, the hydroxyl groups of the beta glucose molecules are all busy doing hydrogen bonding. There are no free hydroxyl groups to carry out any other biochemical reactions. Therefore, cellulose will not mix with water. It is insoluble in water. So these two reasons make cellulose very suitable as building material. The next time you are asked what is the function of carbohydrates, you don't have to think of eating. Think of all the points we discussed today. Until I see you again, bye-bye.